we're back for another video and uh, my apprentice has yet again managed to damage something. She's recently tried to drink bath water so you may hear her commentary in the background. This is something that was gifted to her that doesn't work but uh, we would like to teach her about analog clocks. So we're going to open this up and see what's wrong with it. Alright, let's get a spudger here and first of anything I look at this is I see some of this little acid out of here. I'm going to suggest battery bay problems. Well, that was an understatement. There has definitely been leaking batteries in here. I wonder if that's all that's wrong with it. I've got a few other bits and pieces. I may rip these screws out and see what the internals are like before I worry about cleaning that battery bay out. Alright, I'll just pulled these screwdrivers out and they're a little bit wet. And I realized the last time I used them was in the rain. So I should probably have dried them off. And we want to retain the screw. There's four screws. Let's see how we go with this. Okay, so the back comes off fairly easily. And it looks like most of the acid has been contained with the bottom half here. And it looks like this battery bay comes off pretty easily. What I might do is actually chop these wires and I will re-solder them. After I give this a soak in the sink and a good wash out and clean up, all right, there we go. That one is negative. What we might do is mark that. Not because I can't figure it out, but just because I'm lazy. That one is a plus down there. Okay. Knock these off. And we'll go and soak this. All right, so while that soaks in vinegar, we're gonna give it five volts. We have over here our 5 volt supply. This is taking three AA batteries, which is going to be four and a half volts. I infer from that that 5 volts is probably pretty safe. We'll look and see if things start moving. It does appear to be moving. And I can hear the tick, tick, tick sound. Alright, so I have determined that when the alarm is on and the red arm passes that section, it beeps. So there we go. So that works pretty well. The light on the top is not working. I don't know what that's supposed to do. Oh, okay, so you have a backlight. There we go. And you have two buttons for backlight. Not sure what this one's meant to do. The face seems to come off with four screws, one of which is a little corroded, and it's the bottom one, unsurprisingly. Um, so I'd say them batteries leaked pretty good. Okay, there's our clock. Here's our face and a nice little facade. This has been made rather nicely. Alright, I'm going to go give this a polish up on the rag wheel. See if it looks any less scratched. A few moments later. Alright, put it on the rag wheel. Looks a lot better. I didn't want to go too hard with the polish. So there are some scratches in there but it certainly makes it a lot easier to look at. Okay, so it's pretty hard to notice the scratches on it, and it looks kind of shiny. The backlight, uh, again, doesn't reveal them. And uh, that looks pretty good with the overhead light off. So, looking good so far. Now I've just got to wait for the rest to soak in vinegar for a while. The next morning. All right, so it's now the next morning, and this is how to soak overnight in alcohol. And uh, these contacts, I can actually remove them. I can slide them out. And uh, I was going to work on trying to get these springs clean until I realized that these springs are actually just crimped in here. I can undo that crimp, pop that spring out, and I have a big box of springs that I got from a local hardware store when they were closing down. All right, we're going to remove this uh, contact out of here. To do that, what we've done is we've folded this tab vertically, and we need to get some of that solder off. So I have some solder wick. I'm first going to attach a bit of fresh solder on here. And that gets a bit of flux in there. And then we're going to uh, solder wick our way out of this. Hopefully, we can get this out without burning my fingers. All right, should be enough solder off there to get the contact out. See how we go. Should be able to give a gentle push or a wriggle. 
fact grip with a pair of pliers bit of a wriggle and it should start to push down there we go and we get our spudger here we should be able to lift it the rest of the way out all right i'm going to do the contacts at one one end each uh, each way so I don't get the polarities mixed up. Now the first order of duty here is getting the old spring out. We're going to stretch them out a bit just so we can see what's going on and it uh, looks like what they've done is folded the end over and just tucked it under a little loop in here and uh, so hopefully I can push that loop out a bit and um, loosen the tension on here. Can we get the pliers in the back there and just open that loop up a bit? We can. That bodes well for spring replacement. There we go. So let's get another spring and see if we can cut the size. Okay, we have three springs and hopefully I've chosen a camera angle that doesn't inhibit what I'm doing or block the angle too much. I think what I'm gonna do is do exactly what the manufacturers did. I'm gonna take the back end of the leg on this and bend it over and poke it through. This is a fiddly task that I'm probably gonna have a hard time doing on camera. And uh, multiple sclerosis has affected my dexterity a little, so it could be tricky. Can you still see what I'm doing? I'll push that across. So there's that spring there, and now we're just going to crush it down with a pair of pliers. All right, and here's the battery bay with fresh springs all put back together. So I guess we're going to uh, reassemble. It's not probably the cleanest job I could have done, but it's going to be probably a lot more reliable than it was. So uh, let's put everything back together. Alright, we've got things assembled, we've got some batteries in here, and uh, things are ticking away nicely. And backlight works, the clock is ticking, I've set it to the correct time, and uh, the alarm adjustment also works. Although I've got to turn the alarm on. There's my doorbell again. I've changed the sound on that. There you go. So it all works. I think my apprentice will be happy. So we'll see you in the next one. I hope it was fun.